Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and today let's talk about The Binding by Bridget Collins. So this is a slightly spontaneous video, I was not intending to film this this weekend but I've just finished reading The Binding by Bridget Collins and I need to talk about it and I have too much to say about it for it to be contained in one little segment of a wrap up so I thought I would make an individual book review because oh my goodness my goodness this book was so good I do not have words to describe how much I love this book that's not true I have many words there will be like 10 minutes of words coming your way any moment but this was truly fantastic and I loved it so much and I got so invested in it and I so thoroughly enjoyed it. I don't think I have enjoyed a book this much since I read The Watchmaker of Felgrew Street by Natasha Pulley. So it's been nearly three years since I read a book I have loved as much as this. Um, that's not a reread. That is very exciting. This will probably be my favourite book of 2021 and I'm saying that in January because I think it would take a lot to beat this. Like, this beats every single book I read in 2020. If I had read this in December, it would have been my favourite book of the year. This was just so good. It was so good. So, because there is a chance that I could just tell you how much I love this book, like, repeatedly for 10 minutes, I've decided to try and make this video a little bit more structured. So first I'm going to tell you a little bit about the premise and the kind of story of the book and then I will give you 10 reasons why I love this book. This is going to be a spoiler free review, I'm not going to spoil anything and in fact I'm going to try and say less than sometimes I have heard said about this book. I feel like from hearing people talk about it and from the blurb of the back of the book there were two things that I knew which I feel like I shouldn't have known going into it, that if I had gone into this book blind, I wouldn't have found out till quite far through. So I feel like I'm gonna try to say almost as little about it as possible, um, because while I absolutely loved it, even expecting certain things to happen, I feel like it would have been even more amazing if I had not been expecting those things that I loved. But anyway, so. The premise of this book. The Binding is in many ways a historical fiction book, but it is set in an alternative version of the British 19th century, I would say. Um, obviously it's really never specified, but it feels like a very Victorian world to me. Um, and it is set in this alternate version of, say, 19th century Britain, um, where books are not as they are now. Books are sort of, not exactly banned, but like a little bit dodgy and a little bit magical. Um, and most books that exist are not like novels, they're not like things that people have written, they are um, memories that have been like magically removed from people's mind. So there are these people called binders and they bind people's memories into books. Usually people go to a binder to do this when they want to forget a particular passage of their life or a particular bit of pain or regret or guilt, something like that. If they have something in their life they no longer want to remember, they go to a binder and get it taken out of their head and put into a book. And we follow a young man called Emmett Farmer. He has grown up on his family farm, he is expecting to become a farmer, um, but at the beginning of the book we know that he has been very ill for the last few months with a terrible fever which has left him weak and not really sure if he can work on the farm anymore and then at near the beginning of the book he is summoned by the local binder to come and be her apprentice because she says she sees some power in him and that he will be a great binder so he goes to her house um, in the middle of nowhere everyone thinks she's a witch um, and he, she is going to teach him how to do book binding and how to bind people's memories into books but that is just the setup and everything goes on from there and the book like changes direction lots of times and deals with a lot of really interesting things I'm not going to tell you more about it than that, but it is such a fantastic setup and it is such, such an amazing book. I just, I just can't express enough how utterly fun and wonderful and heartwarming and lovely and gripping and fantastic this book is. It just, I just wanted to do nothing but read it while I was reading it. Um, it's one of those books where if I had not read it during a week where I had to go to work, like if I had picked it up on a weekend, I would have read it in one sitting, I think. As it was, I read it over like three or four days, um, but I stayed up, like when I was finishing it, I stayed up till like half past midnight because I just wanted to finish it because I just was absolutely loving it so much. So, 10 reasons why I love The Binding and why you should read it too. Number one is the world building. The world building in this is amazing. I think it is fantastic because it is a book that has a lot of story, um, but also it manages to pack in a really like fully fledged, interesting, thought out, clever, 
wonderful world, which is sort of like a Victorian version of our world, but it's not. And I like that it's not just like the book binding and that magical element that's in here that is the world building, but it also really explores like all of the kind of social problems that spring from that. Like if you had a society where people could bind their memories into books and get rid of them, wouldn't that mean that people almost would like behave worse in certain ways because they could hide away their sins in books. They could like tuck away the secrets that they want to hide um, and take it out of other people's memories. Like it's so much easier in this world to betray someone, to hurt someone, to do something terrible and then wipe it from your mind or wipe it from their mind. And all of the implications of that are really wonderfully dealt with in this book. But also we get like a glimpse of the history of this world and the kind of reaction against binders at various points. We know that there were crusades against binders in the past and we know that like a lot of people feel very differently about binders and as well it looks really complicated here like the class system in this world how very wealthy people have more access to binders and what that means and all of that stuff like it's so fully fledged and the world exists so far beyond it needs to for the story like we know so much more about the world and there's so many like little glimpses into this world you get which i absolutely love <laughs> like in some ways it is a familiar world and it takes a lot as i said i think from the victorian period but also there is so much else in there as well and so many little details that I just absolutely loved. The second reason that I love The Binding was the atmosphere. It is an incredibly atmospheric, evocative, wonderful novel with like such gothic bits in it. Like it is a very gothic book in many ways. It definitely uses that kind of gothic feel to it um, in a really wonderful way to get across such a fantastic atmosphere, especially when Emmett goes to stay with the binder that he is learning from, um, kind of walking around her house and everything about her and her house is just so atmospheric. But also while bits of it are very gothic, there are also bits of it that are like quite pastoral and explore like rural life in the countryside in just a really interesting way and I feel like the atmosphere throughout is just so wonderful so tense so powerful so interesting so like, clever and really like vividly described and just fantastic. The third thing I loved about the binding is the Victorianness. As I said it is never like stated that it is an alternative version of the Victorian period, but it felt very Victorian to me. I think the only like date that is mentioned is at one point someone talks about 1750 being in the past. So it is just possible this is set in like the late 18th or early 19th century, but it felt for me like an alternative version of the Victorian period. And I loved that about it. Um, and regardless, like it feels super 19th century to me. And I really enjoyed the way it plays with like our actual 19th century class system, but explores what it would be like in this slightly different world um, and the way that it takes all of these like complicated social issues in the Victorian period and translates them into a slightly different world with slightly different dynamics is just wonderful and really interesting and like a really interesting exploration of the social issues of the past in a way that I just loved and obviously if you watch this channel you will know I'm a massive fan of the Victorian period and I love anything set in the Victorian period or anything exploring the Victorian period and I really 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 loved how The Binding did that for me. The fourth thing that I loved about The Binding is the magic and the magical touches and the magical system. I mentioned before how I really enjoy historical fiction that has a touch of magic or a little bit of the supernatural and I really really like the way magic is used in The Binding especially because like there basically isn't any other magical element in the book apart from the binding process and the way people can take people's memories into books. Like that's the only magical element, but somehow that works so wonderfully and somehow that is such a clever, wonderful thing. And it's also incredibly bound up with the plot. Like I think it would be very easy to create a world with this fun magical idea where that magical idea kind of wasn't important to the story, but actually the magical idea behind the book binding ties up so wonderfully with the story and is so important to the premise of the book and the kind of arc of the book that that just works fantastically. The magic in here is wonderful and I love the magical system and I love the kind of interplay between magic and history. That's something I really, really enjoy in quite a lot of historical fiction that has like a little supernatural element. Um, and it is a slightly bigger supernatural element in the binding. Like I feel like it would probably be legitimate to claim this as a fantasy book to a certain degree as well as a historical book 
Um, and especially like, it's interesting, I think part one of the book feels almost like a fantasy book and then in part two of the book you're like, this is historical fiction. And I love that too, but anyway, we're not gonna go into that. I just really, really like the magic in here. I thought it was really fun and really nicely done. I just, yeah, so great. The fifth thing I love in this book is the way it explores memory. Obviously, because we have this big, important plot device and premise, which is all about people taking their memories and putting them into books. Memory is a theme that is really wonderfully explored in here. I've mentioned before that I really, really love books about memory. Um, and they're like, a lot of my favorite books are books which are like looking back narratives or things that explore memory and the complexities of memory and like the things you forget and remember and stuff like that. And I think the way this book looks at memory and how memories can make a person and how removing someone's memories is like taking away some of their identity was just fantastic and like so so interestingly explored. I really really love that about it. The sixth element of the binding I wanted to mention was the like bookishness of it. I love that the magic is about books and I love that the memory element and the magical thing in here is all about books because it's just so fun and I think if you're a bookish person who loves books it's just so interesting to read about this world where books are a different thing and there's like a black market where people sell books that contain other people's memories that have been stolen from them so you can like read a book for pleasure but you'd be reading someone else's life and I just really enjoyed that element. I thought it was just really, really fun. Like in a way, this storyline could work with rather than the memories being bound into books, they're like put in jars. But somehow it's just so much cooler than put in books. And I just, just really, really enjoyed that element. The seventh thing that I really, really loved about this book is the characters in it and the complexity of the characters in it. I really, really like all of the characters in this book. They are very, very engaging. But I also liked that the characters in this book um, are not all straightforward, they're not all one thing or the other, they're very very complicated, they make mistakes, they sometimes do bad or cruel things, but also you go to understand them all so much and I think the characterization and the like psychological complexity of the characters in here are wonderful. There are so many characters that I think are amazing and I'm not going to tell you who my favourite characters are because as I said I feel like I knew slightly more about this book than I wanted to get into it which is why I'm being a bit vague here but some of the characterization in here and some of the insights we get into the characters are just wonderful and so so cleverly done and so complicated in a way that I just absolutely loved. The eighth thing I really loved in this book is the relationships between the characters. Again I'm not going to say too much about this because I'm trying to be a bit vaguer so that you get the full appreciation out of this book that you can get but I feel like there are so many wonderful character relationships in this book and there's one dynamic between two characters in particular that I just adored that I just thought was fantastic but even the less central relationships in this book are so interesting and so fully explored and feel real and complicated like the dialogue is always so rich and real um, and so compelling and I just love the way that characters relate to each other and talk to each other the arcs and like ups and downs of the relationships between different characters in this book and I just think it is wonderful and just yeah so good so so good the ninth thing that I loved about the binding was the book structure which was not the structure I was expecting it to have um which is why I'm not going to talk about it here because like I said I feel like if you went into this book completely blind it would be just like even more truly amazing than if you went into it knowing a bit about it but the structure was not exactly what I expected and there are three parts in this book and the three parts were not the three parts I was necessarily expecting it to have and each part is slightly different um I'm not going to say more than that but I love the way this was structured so much and I think that was perfect and so interesting and so cleverly done and like I said not really what I was expecting but wonderful so yes yes the final thing that I love about The Binding was the writing. This book is beautifully, beautifully written in just that kind of writing that I love where it's beautiful and it's lyrical and it's clever and it's wonderful but it serves its purpose in getting across the point, the story, the themes, the characters, like the writing is just fantastic and you almost like don't notice how good the writing is because the writing is there to tell you this amazing story, uh, which is the kind of writing I love best, I think especially in historical fiction. Like it is wonderful and it is beautiful and it is lyrical, but it's also, it's just, 
the perfect way to tell this story and I love that. So there we go, those are 10 reasons why I love the binding. As you may be able to tell from my overflowing enthusiasm in this video, I just love this so much. I just so enjoyed it. It's just like ticked all of my bookish boxes and I just, I just thought it was truly incredible and I just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Like not only is it fantastic, not only is it brilliant, really written and clever, not only did it make me think, not only did the characters and the writing and all of those things come together, but also it was so gripping and so fun and so like, I had me on the edge of my seat, so excited to read on, so thoroughly enjoying this book and it was just wonderful. So I highly, highly, highly recommend The Binding. And that's all I wanted to say. So please let me know down in the video if you've read The Binding. Did you love it as much as me? Because I hope you did, because it was so amazing. So amazing. So that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching this video. And I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.